It happened in 2016 with the land acquisition ordinance. It happened with the scheduled castes and scheduled tribe prevention and atrocity amendment bill in 2018. And it is happening once again with the repealing of the three farm laws. The common thread you ask in all three cases, the government dropped the towel and showed its back. Meaning in every single of the aforementioned instances, a violent mob of protesters through sustained spells of anarchy forced the mighty Modi government with over 300 seats in its arsenal to shut shop and give what the mob demanded. It is perhaps an irony that the supposedly strongest government of independent India has covered down on more than one occasion in front of its detractors. Hi and welcome. You're watching TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Tribhuvan and in this video, I will tell you how every time the mob prevailed over democracy, be it regarding the SCST Act, Land Acquisition Bill or the farm laws. Let's begin. In the early hours of Friday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi dropped the bomb that the three farm laws introduced by his government in 2020 were set to be repealed by the next session of the parliament, that is the winter session, which is slated to begin on November 29. Blocking the national capital and its borders certainly rejoiced at the announcement, but a majority of public was shell-shocked to see the government bend down in defeat. Whether the farm laws were good or bad for the farmers is a separate discussion for another time, but the decision to cover down and accept the violence diktat of the mob that has locked jammed Delhi for over a year certainly sets a dangerous precedent for future events. However, this is not the first time that the Modi government has pulled its hand back after being put under pump by violent mob of protesters. It did the same in the case of land acquisition ordinance and emulated a similar feat when it came to upholding Supreme Court's decision to mellow down the draconian SCST Act. In the early days of NDA 1, the Modi government had brought in nine main amendments to the 2013 land acquisition legislation through an ordinance and subsequently as part of a bill. Out of these nine, six including the provision dealing with consent clause, social impact assessment, replacing the term private company with private entity became the bone of contention for the relatively inexperienced Modi administration. As a result, the opposition coalesced, with Congress nearly decimated in the general elections a few months back, finding its footing amidst the careful. The cause to obtain land without the owner's consent in some cases formed the fulcrum of the protest, as farmers poured in and joined the opposition. Although the motive of the government was to speed up the land acquisition process for developmental work, it could not communicate it to the main stakeholders. The opposition seized in on the initiative dialed up the pressure and forced the government to take a step back. Though the land acquisition bill was cleared in the Lok Sabha, it met with stiff opposition in the upper house where the BJP and its allies fell short of numbers. In one of his monkey bath correspondences, PM Modi informed the country that land ordinance aimed at making it easier for companies to acquire agricultural land will not be reissued. He stated, I have decided that it should be allowed to expire. It means restoration of my situation that prevailed before my government took over. Akin to today's decision of repealing the farm laws, the government's agreement to bring back crucial clauses related to the consent of affected families and social impact assessment in the acquisition law came weeks ahead of the Bihar Assembly election in 2015, which incidentally the BJP lost. The misuse of the SCST Act prevalent throughout the country made the Supreme Court strike down of its clauses in 2018, but the union government again introduced and passed a new bill in parliament in order to ensure that those clauses remain. Reported by TFI in a 2018 verdict, the Supreme Court had made a provision for anticipatory bill to offenders under the law. However, after strong protest against the delusion across the country, the Modi government gave into the demands and removed this provision to bring the law back to its original draconian form. The government's version of the bill stated that no preliminary inquiry will be required for registering a criminal case and an arrest under this law would not be subject to any approval. No one is arguing that there is no caste operation in the society, but any law should not have provision that can be used against the common people 
by a certain community. The repeated misuse of the SCST Act shows that it needs to be amended. However, the Modi administration has preferred to take a timid approach, fearing losing favor from the SCST class. As a result, several cases have emerged over the years where the abuse of the SCST Act has led to dangerous consequences. The state of Maharashtra had been rocked with the suicide of its lady singer, Range Forest Officer Dipali Chavan Mohite, who after being repeatedly sexually harassed by a senior forest officer named Vinod Shivkumar was threatened by Vinod himself to frame her under the SCST Act and Dipali consequently took the extreme step. 28-year-old Dipali posted in the Milgat Tiger Reserve in Amravati, Maharashtra shot herself to death at her official quarters. A perpetrated suicide note that she left behind revealed that she allegedly faced sexual harassment and torture at the hands of an Indian Forest Service officer, Deputy Conservator of Forests Vinod Shivkumar. More recently, Munmun Datta, a famous TV actress who appears on the popular show Tarak Mehta Ka Ulta Chashma, was booked under Prevention of Atrocities against SCST Act for using a castist slur in a video. Questions are now being raised and rightly so over the Modi government's soft spot for rioters and mob protesters. The government is yet to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the mob justice evangelist in its seven years in power to assert the dominance. Some netizens have cast aspersions that if Shaheen Bagh was not uprooted in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, even CAA could have met a similar fate. Ever since passing the Citizenship Amendment Bill, the government has been sitting quietly on the NRC front with bolstered protesters to set to launch another renewed front against the introduction of NRC, one fears for the worst. There might be a bigger game plan for PM Modi and his government. However, at this time, a layman is finding it hard to decipher the developments.